seek cards, get robots. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I am playing an Alchemy Original Commander from Phyrexia. This is Vexir Ictakix Air. This is a Bant Commander that gives you a Phyrexian Golem whenever you seek a card. Now, if you're not that familiar with the digital only card, Seeking is getting a card that fits a criteria at random from your deck. It doesn't shuffle your library. It just takes out the card and puts it either into your hand or onto the battlefield, depending on what the card does. A uh, good example of that might be Lukamina, Moon Druid, who, when she enters the battlefield, seeks a land card with a basic type and puts it into your hand. Uh, this deck is all about getting additional value out of those cards with Seek. So I'm playing almost every card that seeks in the three colors that I'm playing, which are blue, white, and green. Of course, to support that, I'm also playing some good cards in blue, white, and green. A couple counter spells in blue, a little bit of exile in white, and in green, of course, ramp. Um, this deck is pretty cool because when it goes off, you end up with this army of Phyrexian golems. And you might be thinking, well, aren't there other cards that make Phyrexian Golems? There sure are. And those cards tend to make them stronger. So like Vex here, Ictic Ix Air, gives the Golems Vigilance. Blade Slicer, Splicer, gives it First Strike. And the other Splicer, Master Splicer, gives them plus one, plus one. I also have a couple other cards in here that benefit artifact creatures, because ideally we're making a bunch of them, uh, like Unctus, Grand Metatect. And I'm also playing one more Golem Maker. It doesn't buff them, but it can actually end up making quite a few. Uh, Malkator Purity Overseer, who is the Phyrexian Elephant Wizard from Phyrexia All Will Be One. This deck looks a little strange, but when it starts going, it's really, really cool. So we're going to take this into the queue and you're going to see what Seek can do. Mono White Tokens, helmed by Mondrak Glory Dominus. I've got a pretty nice start here, though, since most things that make tokens are not creatures, which means we can play our Esper Sentinel. Uh, that said, in recent years, especially in white, token creatures from creatures have gotten so dang good. Talking about things like Adeline, a great card. All right, we've got our Esper Sentinel down, and I suppose I will ramp. Uh, ramping here doesn't actually give me anything to play next turn that's fine. You know, if we had gone second, I could play the Surgical Metamorph next turn. Make two Esper Sentinels. These both come in tapped. And I will want to set up for some green mana. Oh, thankfully, we still have something to do, though. We can ramp! Mind Stone, and we're gonna swing in for one off the Esper Sentinel. It's a little risky, by the way, with the Esper Sentinel there, since there are uh, some cards that cost two and make two tokens at instant speed. Ooh, scary. Oh, speaking of things that make tokens, Oketra's Monument is going to make them a token every time they cast a creature spell. Hmm. I will play the Glacial Floodplain. Vex here. Hey, wait a minute. I don't need these left up. It doesn't really matter because I wouldn't be able to cast anything. Um, this came in tapped. Um, I wouldn't be able to like hold up mana for Tail's End. Ooh. Here comes Mondrak, discounted by one and coming with a little buddy. It's a little warrior buddy. You know, I kind of want a Mondrak too. I think I'll make a Mondrak. Yes. A Mondrak... For me. Now I have a Mondrak. And you do not have a Mondrak. Because I'm exiling it with Swords to Plowshares. If you'd like, you could make it indestructible, but that does not stop the swords. Then I'm gonna swing in for a grand three damage. Let's go, Vexir! <laughs> Got him. By the way, Mondrak is a card I actually already have in my deck because Vexir makes tokens and doubling the tokens is really fun. They could replay Mondrak here. I could make my Mondrak indestructible. But 
but I really want to start seeking cards and making golems. All right, Mondrax out. They're gonna get another wheel one one. Hello, tiny one ones. Hmm, what color of mana do I crave? Well, based on my hand, I'm gonna say some blue. Uh, and then we're going to play Lucamina. Give me some of those goods. Ooh, look at all those delicious goods. Uh, we could hold up in Tail's End, or I could play Unctus to make things a little bit stronger. Hold up. Oh my god, mine's an artifact. I was like, why are you getting buck? It's because it's a clone from Surgical Metamorph. It also can become indestructible, so. Yeah. Love that for us. Hitting for five. Unctus is like, I can also make things into artifacts. I know, and it's weird that you do that, Unctus. Like, it's really weird that you do that. Two mana. I feel like they're sacrificing things and they're about to cast a board wipe. Do you pay the two? They didn't pay the two. All right, I am also going to make my boy indestructible. Uh, I will sacrifice. It doesn't really matter what I sacrifice. These, everybody else dies. And now we're both left with indestructible four fours. I'll throw down the key to the archives. I don't like that it left my mind stone open. Uh, we've got Approach, Cross and Grip, and Counter Spell. I actually really like Cross and Grip here to get rid of a Ketra's Monument. Um, flip it and grip it. And we chill. Mirax is going to be able to spit out two tokens. Off Mondrak's ability. Here comes Daxos, though. He's going to be gaining life whenever a creature comes into play under their control. Ooh, like these mites. Why use those mites when you can make these? It's four little mites and a 3-3 three, three flyer. And they're going to gain a lot of life. Just a, just a little. Just a lot. Hey, do you want to attack in? No? Okay, that's cool. Right now, Verdant Rejuvenation just gets me four random creatures, enchantments, planeswalkers, etc. And that seems totally worth it to me. Let's go. Four is better than nothing. Oh, spark double. Uh, I guess I'll have two Mondrax. Obscura Polymorphist. Oh, we, we get to exile something. Mondrak. Dang. That was gaming right there. And I even have a counter spell for if they can play Mondrak again. All right, we're going to go to combat. I'm going to swing in with my now a 6-6 because it is an artifact and it's getting... Bu oh my god, this is so weird. Mondrak is a clone of an altered Mondrak. I hope I can start making some tokens. I want to make some tokens. I think it's the black one or the red one that makes tokens. Yeah, I, don't, I won't be able to make any tokens off that. It's okay, Vexter will make me some tokens. Oh, hello, welcoming vampire. Welcome. Priest of ancient lore. Hello there, a fine little 2-1. Since this is not legendary, I can copy it with Urza. Yeah, that could get gross. We could also copy key to the archives. It actually doesn't do that much for me. You know what does? Doing this or this for mana. Let's start by making a couple Mondrax. Just a few. A few, a normal number of Mondrax. It's 
four three three Mondrax. This is, this is beautiful. I love how Urza is just like, what? What's happening? Shh, don't question it. Don't question it. More Mondrax, more fun. A Johnny Strength of the Pride. Uh, this is Johnny can gain them quite a bit of life, but I don't, I don't want them to um have the minus two making the pride mate. That is why I'm going to actually counter this, um, because they have both Daxos and Impassioned Orator on the board. Uh, them getting a pride mate would be really good for them. Them making tokens, that's cool. Who cares? What I want is I want the double, 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 double. Each Mondrak is going to be making a doubling effect, which should give me infinite mana. Uh, I am going to copy Mindstone, which gives me 64 Mindstones. I can't use them until next turn, but I have 64 Mindstones. Oh, and they're also all 3-3s, three which is normal and regular. I love them. I, I love my Mind Stones. Oh my god, imagine if I copied Key to the Archives. Like, the hell that would have been resolving that stack. I would have milled myself! I would have had, like, 12 cards left in my deck! Oh no, I don't draw off those. I just, I just generate the cards and discard. Oh my god, I still would have had to resolve it 64 times. Yeah, this is normal. Whatever. It's fine. Uh, I'm going to make my Mondrak indestructible. I'm going to pay... one colorless mana off this Mind Stone, and I'm going to sacrifice uh, two of these Mind Stones. My Mondraks will live forever! Now, even if they have a board wipe, I have three indestructibles and I can make even more. We have a counter spell in hand, though, so we can stop, you know, all the board wipes that they would be playing in white. Hi, I'm Urza. And next turn, I can make like five copies of Portal to Phyrexia. Sorry, five? I meant like 500. Azuri, the Proliferator, is our opponent's commander. I've got a Mind Stone in hand, but no blue mana, which I might be able to get off the Settle the Wild. I'm going to keep this hand, and I actually want to talk about one of the weirdest inclusions. Norn's Disassembly is a card that was actually in Alchemy, and I could not figure out what to do with it up until Vexor was released. Norn's Disassembly is two mana, sacrifice a historic permanent to seek a historic card. Now, historic is a keyword we actually haven't really seen since Dominaria, so having it come back here was really weird. Historics are artifacts, legendaries, and sagas, uh, and that's like legendary creatures or um, planeswalkers. So why does that work so well with Vexir? Well, Vexir makes golems. The golems are historic because they are artifacts i can pay to sacrifice one get another one because i'm seeking a card and get another historic card out of my deck it adds up to a good amount of value uh and it's actually a really cool piece of like synergy when you start getting it rolling uh, i can either choose to ramp here or play the faceless agent get myself a board presence and something that can deal with the stone coil serpent before they proliferate it Settle of the Wilds, by the way, does not guarantee me blue mana. It's got, like, probably a 50-50 chance. I feel like we could just draw it on our own. Perfect. We've got the snow-covered island here, so I'm going to play Vexir. Looking good. And I will go to combat. This is a golem, so 
gets vigilance. I will pass the turn. They've got six mana now. It takes seven to play Zuri and use its proliferate ability. Um, I think this card is great, by the way. If you haven't seen my deck yet, I have an Azuri Super Friends deck, which is pretty silly. Odawara, they're just putting that back into my hand. I'm fine with that. It makes me feel like they might have a counter spell for it next turn, but I'm not too upset if that's what happens. Uh, I will attempt to replay Vexir. It lands. We're going to play a land, and I'm going to seek a land into my hand using Lukamina Moon Druid. I got an island. Looking good. We sought. So now we have a golem. A Phyrexian golem. A 3-3. Three, three. Missouri's coming out. And they're going to pay the 3 to proliferate. Stonecoil Serpent is no longer going to be a 1-1. One, one. It is a 3-3. Three, three. It has protection from multicolored. So, Vex here. And their replicating ring is also accelerating. It now has four knight counters. Yes, knight counters. I wish to do more seeking. I seek more answers. So I'm going to settle the wilds, which will seek a basic land, put it into play. Looking good. We're going to get two golems there. That's because we also seek a permanent into hand. We got the thought monitor. I'm going to use the innovative meta tact. This way, if one of my artifact creatures deals damage to my opponent, I will seek a non-land card with mana value two or less. They don't want to sacrifice either of these, which means we seek, which means we get another golem, which means I can keep playing things. If I had blue mana, we could have gotten that thought monitor out. I don't have blue mana, but I will settle for getting some boots uh, and we use the boots to protect Vex here next turn. We have uh, quite the board building up here. Here comes Ugin. They can destroy a colored permanent. And they destroyed my commander. Well, I'm almost out of seeking, except for the uh, meta tech. But I also have enough mana that I can just replay Vexer here. They've got three mana. They're going to proliferate, which also draws them a card. Thank you, Azuri. They now have a 4-4, which is able to deal with these pesky golems. Until we play this, the Chief of the Foundry. Artifact creatures I control get plus one, plus one, and... We're going to go ahead and draw two cards, and we're going to go ahead and give these another plus one, plus one. Thank you, Master Splicer. I think you're a really cool guy, too. Uh, I'm going to give the boots to the Thought Monitor. This does have reach. That said, I'm still going in with everything. This is just me saying I want to deal some serious damage. And that damage is going to be lethal. Good game, Missouri. Karn Scion of Urza is a colorless commander. Uh, always a rarity to see, but you know, I built one too recently. Uh, I built Liberator. This Karn, by the way, the plus is Karn Advantage. It's Karn Advantage. It puts a card into exile and one into the hand, but I, the opponent, get to choose which goes where. The minus ability gets the card that I didn't pick out of exile, puts it into hand. And the minus two ability creates artifacts that scale with the number of artifacts you have. Um, let's go ahead and start rolling here, though. We've got uh, no ramp, but a whole lot of cards we can play on turn three. Ah, Inventor's Fair. We're going to be seeing a lot of uh, very funky cards out of them. I, I feel like <laughs> when you are playing a colorless deck, you have an excuse to play so many strange and unusual lands. Uh, I'm going to play the Jukai Liberator here. It does have ninjutsu, but I have no creatures to ninjutsu with, and I feel like they're not going to have good blockers next turn, so I might be able to trigger the Seek off of Vexir. Uh, we have enough mana to play our commander. They cannot currently crew the Automaton good for me, so we're going to play Vex here. Get it on the battlefield. Swing in with the Liberator. We hit, and I'm going to choose land, uh, because I 
don't have a land to play this turn. Nice! That's a land! Uh, it's a Temple Garden. I love Temple Garden. I love Selesnia. I love Selesnia so much. This has got to be my favorite guild. They like gardening. They like peace. And they have an army of ghosts that live in a giant tree. I read the first Ravnica novel. It's great. You should read it too. So now they have availability uh, of having a 4-4 block. Patrick Automaton can crew the Reckoner Bankbuster. Uh, and that's not great for me. And now I've got some fun options about what I could do. And you know what? This Liberator, he's done enough. He's done plenty. So we're going to turn him into some sort of a 4-drop using Spawning Pod. Uh, Spawning Pod sacrifices a creature and seeks a creature of mana value 1 plus the sacrificed creature. Does that sound a lot like Birthing Pod? Because it should. Um, this is sorcery speed ability, so we toss it away. Goodbye, Liberator. And hello, Obsessive Collector! Because that was sought from our library. I always have to think, like, what? What is the tense of Seek? It was so we sought it from our library. Um, <laughs> Obsessive Collector uh, comes into play, and we get a Phyrexian Golem. It's really cool! <clears throat> <laughs> There's a Hedron Archive that gives them two mana if they'd like to use the Bank Buster or the Tome to draw a card. Honestly, they could do either one. <clears throat> None of these have flying. So I'm going to Spark Double my Commander, which makes a uh, Commander but slightly bigger. I'm going to attack in with the Obsessive Collector. This is going to seek, and we're going to get two more little buddies. Ooh, nice, Morari's Wake. <clears throat> I'm going to... Wow, I'm going to lose my throat is what I'm going to do. My voice is dying. I'm going to sacrifice a zero cost and seek. Aw, I got Skrelv. I got a little guy. I got Skrelv. Look at that. It's so cute. Don't worry, my voice is fine. I'm, um, congested because I have terrible allergies and I cannot take super powerful allergy medication and scream on the same day because then I just fall asleep. Yay! <laughs> allergy medication that makes you sleep. <laughs> so, uh, Skrelv Defector Might uh, helps me protect my cards. Uh, like Vex here or second Vex here. But it only really works against colored spells, which is something our opponent doesn't have because of Karn. Karn is their commander, which means they only have colorless spells. Uh, we're starting to go off though with these golems. I am loving them, and I will love them even more when I get more mana. I'm playing Marari's Wake to give all my creatures plus one, plus one. Looking good. And double the amount of mana that I get out of my lands. I am not attacking on the ground at all because Worm Coil Engine is really scary. They just mine Tome. They scry. They'll be gaining some life next turn. I do have Sword of Plashers. I know I could exile the worm, and I might end up doing that. But for now. I want to build up an army. I want to be able to swing in for lethal all at once. And this would be gaining them life. That's part of why I didn't want to do it. And because I have these Vexiers, I'm going to be able to make even more golems next turn unless they somehow wipe the board. And there are some sort of colorless board wipes. And there's also a lot of ratchet bombs in Arena. Uh, ratchet bombs, which can be sacrificed to destroy all of my zero cost creatures. Ooh! Karn is going to make it so my artifacts cannot be activated. Thanks, Karn. I can still attack with them, though. I can attack with all my creatures. And I'm almost ready for the lethal swing next turn.
I won't be able to activate my spawning pod, though. Aww. Poor spawning pod. You just wanted to help me get stuff. Shrub's a little guy. A 2-2 with toxic one. Can't block. Cannot be activated. Oh, and it's Karn! Hello, Karn! Karn's bringing the carnage. They reveal two cards. Moon Silver Key and Hall of Tagsin. Uh, Moon Silver Key is able to fetch some artifacts. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in exile. By the way, because it is in exile, the other Karn can now get it into hand. Um, they don't have mana, though, so we're good. Worm Coil Engine, I assume, not attacking in. Looking good. We're going to seek new knowledge. It's going to make two more 4-4s. Four Who likes 4-4s? Four I like 4-4s. Four and now I have many golems. And I also have so many beautiful cards. So many beautiful cards. Ooh, Soon's Intervention. Uh, I am going to cast Swords to Plowshares and exile the Worm Coil Engine. They can crew in response. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. They can gain 4 life. Uh, using the Maze Mind Tome. And this will gain them six life. Would you like to crew Typhoon Stalker? Because I have, I believe, lethal damage. Despite all of your life gain. We're going to cast Soon's Intervention next to destroy a blocker. They didn't crew, but it really doesn't matter because, well, four fours. Also a five five. Also a two two. Four five and a five six. Nice job, Vexer. Oh, and a other Vexter, of course. Kashmina, Enigma Sage. Hello, Kashmina. How are you? Kashmina is the uh, commander that gives planeswalkers her abilities. Uh, let's see what I have here. I have two mana in only two of my three colors, but they do let me play something on turn one. Something that does nothing, but it's a very, very cool card if we start rolling with our commander Norn's Disassembly, which lets me sacrifice historic permanence, including the artifact golems we create, in order to generate, well, more cards in hand. We, we get a seek. We, we get to seek cards, and that gives me more golems. It's a nice little thing here. All right, reclaim the waste. They are searching for land, and they're going to get some land. More of that good green stuff. All right. Two entire lands and a gilded goose. I'm going to play my Jukai Liberator or my Urza's Construction Drone here. I'm going to go for Urza's Construction Zone. Wow. Zone. Drone. Uh, if you haven't seen this card yet, it's an all-star and a colorless deck, but it actually puts the Urza lands into your deck and what's cool about that is it means that i get to attack get a land and get a golem because i have used the seek ability we could hold up for a counter spell or we could play vexir it kicks air and attack in on their commander enigma sage currently just scrying but I don't want them to scry. I want them to die. I'm gonna play the scry land over the Urza's Mine. Uh, and because I'm getting lands off of the construction zone, I'm gonna keep saying zone instead of drone. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and throw that to the bottom. I have a counter spell ready for next turn. And another counter spell ready. But the one that does the seek is probably gonna be more fun. Ooh, but it's going to be dependent on it if I can take another turn, because they just cast Time Warp. Can I do it again? Hopefully not. They just passed with five mana. I don't trust that at all. Uh, I am going to direct some of these creatures over at Kashmina. Oh, it looks like something might be bounced or tapped. Divide by zero on Urza's construction drone. 
I'm actually going to deny this and see if they have a response. Mystical dispute? Yep. It's a blue on blue violence. Going to attack Kashmina with these two. R.I.P. Goose. But Kashmina lives another day. I'm going to play Skrelv, our little guy who helps protect our other little guys by giving them fake protection. This is not quite a mother of runes, but it gives unblockability, toxic one, and hexproof from a color until end of turn. Um, it's pretty helpful. All right, Kashmina. I feel like this is a super friends deck that's missing its super friends, missing its other uh, planeswalkers. Okay, River's Rebuke. I expected that at some point this game. There it was. They bounced all my stuff back into hand. As far as headquarters, we could put more copies of this into hand. Um, I'm going to go with Vex here. And Skrelv. Just a little guy. And that is the opposite of a little guy. It is Koma. Koma is very, very scary. Koma makes snakes that can either tap down my creatures or make things indestructible. Unfortunately, Soon's intervention does not take out the snake. There's no such thing. And by the way, even if I did hold up a counter spell, sad news, bad news, uncounterable. Well, I'm going to dig desperately for things. Um, I'm going to actually sacrifice my Urza's construction drone. To make sure I had a land drop this turn and also to dig for answers. And an answer I did find. Uh, I'm going to pay two life here, by the way. To give this protection from blue. Or not protection, unblockability from blue. They could still sacrifice the snake, but they would have had to do it first. Tap it down. Perfect. Um, and we no longer are set up to get the Tron drawn from our deck. But, yeah, you know, we might. We might hit the, um, the tower just by by random chance. So I'll say, hey, you should totally attack me, Kashmina, with your coma. You should tap it. Please tap it. They did not tap it. Ah, another piece of removal. Coma, I exile you. I have a counter spell in hand. So if you are protecting this through many means, I'll be able to stop you. Things are happening. Oh, things are happening? Blink of an eye! Hmm, no, I, I don't actually think that you are going to be doing any blinking. Not today. Now, you have a chance here if you want to sacrifice some snakes for no reason. This is why, by the way, it's very important to have exile-based removal in your deck if you can possibly run it. I'm going to pay one white. And I'm going to give this hexproof from blue. But I'm not going to be directing it at a Kashmina. I'm actually going to be directing it at their face. You can trade these snakes to protect your commander. But I'm going to be doing some snaking of my own with the Liberator. I will not be getting the Seek trigger because Vexture's not on the battlefield. I will be lining up more good stuff. And I am actually going to choose land because I have a lot of great stuff in hand. And... Being able to play it is going to take mana. Right now, their hand is empty. They've got the Midnight Clock. We have a way to destroy the Midnight Clock. It's kind of all about what Kashmina is able to either scry to or if they get to ultimate ability, cheat into play. And I say 
get to ultimate ability because there's a bunch of proliferate spells which could get them there a lot faster. Hmm. Vexir, it kicks air. Does this get counter? Memory lapse, it gets put on top of my deck. You know what? I'll take that. I'll put that on top of my library. Unfortunately, this only works if I hit a player. But right now, I am not too scared of Kashmina. Should I be? Maybe. Am I? No. And we're going to get a non-land. By the way, it shows that I no longer know what's on top of the deck. I know what's on top of the deck. Ooh, and an Eternal Wanderer? What a nice card to have. They can put a couple more counters onto their Midnight Clock, but we're about to start spitting out two two Samurais every turn. And there's no way that they're going to get that clock all the way up to Midnight when we've got the Intervention in hand. Nalia, a party commander. Also, a hand that does not have enough mana in it. That's better. No white mana, though. No white mana. No problem. We'll, we'll get white mana off the Ornithopter of Paradise. Uh, so Nalia um, buffs your party if you have a party. Also lets you play party members from the top of your deck. So I expect to see a lot of warriors and rogues and clerics and wizards in this deck. There's not that many wizards, especially in these colors, but there's a few. There's a few wizards, especially in, uh, I was about to say, in white and black, you have things like Jadar. Hey, Jadar. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and throw down our Ornithopter of Paradise. Not a great blocker, but it is a little ramp, and I will take some ramp. third land, but it will come in tapped since they don't have three other lands. Acquisitions expert. Gonna take a look at my hand. Uh, I will offer you the spark double to discard the verdant rejuvenation to discard and the trove mage to discard. The clone... A seek or rejuvenation. All right, they went for Trove Mage since I can cast it next turn. Makes sense. By the way, they are in black and white, which means that they're probably also running a good amount of powerful removal. There's just no reason not to. And their party is almost complete since this is a rogue. Ooh, I could also Liberator here. Now we're gonna go for Vex here. For the Arctic Tree line. I now have a blocker. I have a 3-4 on the ground. Vex's art is so cool looking. Nice, a Ketra's Monument. When they cast creatures, they will now get 1-1 one, one Warriors. Ooh. I love Mondrak. Mondrak doubles the tokens that I get from Seeking. Just going to play the Obsessive Collector. Another nice big blocker. Also a good attacker that is going to seek when it deals combat damage. Nalia's out, and they're still missing a cleric. So let's see. There's their cleric. It's a cat. But it's a cat with all creature types, which means that everything on their board is about to get plus one, plus one. And death touch. Yikes. I have no trades I would like to make, so we're just going to take a bunch of damage. Sometimes you just need a little bit of glue to hold things together, and changelings do that so very nicely. I'm going to play Mondrak. I'm going to attack with the Obsessive Collector. And that's going to give me two three threes. But unfortunately, I'm not as wide as they are. So I may be forced uh, into some awkward blocks here, and might still die anyway. Paying four life to make Mondrak indestructible, I think it's just going to be too dang risky. Oh my god, you are going so wide. Also, the Arc Priest of Iona is going to give one of their creatures plus one, plus one, and flying until end of turn, which I'm pretty sure means that I can't do anything. Also, I'm about to lose four more life off the Malakir Blood Priest because they have four party members. Dang! 
This person knows how to party. Molly, you have hit nothing but gas. They have got lands and then they have just exploded with creatures off the top of their library. Honestly, good for them. I think that's an admirable feat to manage to get to party this hard. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and die since I can't prevent lethal damage. It's a good game, Paul Clems. Pseudo Star Lord is playing Glissa, Sunslayer. First strike, death touch, and some game winning fun. Uh, I have a very slow hand to go up against the Glissa, but hopefully I can get some first strike of my own off my Blade Splicer. Thank you, Blade Splicer to deal with them. I don't have any seek in hand though, which is a bit of a bit of a downside, but I do have ramp now. I drew this into the north, so I'm pretty happy with this hand. All right, Glissa. If you're not familiar with Glissa, ooh, they have the fancy art for Glissa. Um, ooh, do I want to just hold up the tail's end? Nah, I want to ramp. I like ramping. Stopping people from having fun versus ramping. I choose ramp. Uh, and I will choose to get some more white mana, so I have double white and double blue. Uh, Glissa is a first strike death touch 3-3, three, three, which makes it really hard to block. Uh, when it deals combat damage to somebody, it will either draw you a card, destroy an enchantment, or remove counters from target permanents, including your own permanents, including sagas. Uh, it's pretty cool. It can rewind sagas, like binding the old gods so you can reuse their abilities over and over. Arcane Signet. They're just choosing to ramp this turn. Cool. Yanti Scale Shield. That makes my things indestructible until end of turn. Let's play the coast here. And that's it's like a potential seek. I feel like it's best for me to just hold open the tail's end on a turn like this. So I will. Um if I had something better to commit to the board, we have Vexor, we have Unctus, um, we have the blade splicer, then I would. They might be able to stop me from countering their stuff, though. I can tell that they're passing with something, and it could be something that's a uh, safekeeping, protects one of their permanents, makes it indestructible until end of turn. And there's the Glissa. There's the counter. And do they respond? Nope. Glissa has been countered. They can replay her again next turn. Ooh, Soul Stereo Axe. I now actually have something which will, uh, Seek. Seek is good. Seek is good for me. Uh, I'm going to play the Blade Splicer and the Soul Stealer Axe. Hoping to use the Soul Stealer Axe on the Phyrexian Golem token. Uh, so we're essentially going to go back and forth hitting each other for value. Ooh, Elspeth's Nightmare. Taking away the first strike from the Blade Splicer. That's... That's rough. Shadow Spear can take away Indestructible as well. Rude. But it's fine, because I found some more removal! Let's play Vexir Ictikix Air. Um, this, by the way, is the only non-creature I have. So, yeah, it's it's gonna get discarded next turn. Unless the thing we seek off the Soul Stealer Axe is better. We're dealing three damage, so we will seek a three drop. Three cost card. Since we seek, we also get a three three golem. They have different art because they're from different sets. Hmm, what do you pick? Bounty of the Deep? Or the Scale Shield? I feel like Bounty of the Deep. Um, this gets me two cards, and this is easily negated by the Shadow Spear. I guess they disagree. They're saying, nope, I'm not dealing with that right now. Alright. 
Glissa on the battlefield, and I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to give them a random creature from their deck. This way I can still attack them, and I do want to attack. Choose violence. We swing in. Three, 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 nine total damage. And we get another three, three out of the deal. And we're going to play Thought Monitor, discounted from its affinity for artifacts. By the way, the card that I got was Spawning Pod. Nice. I like Spawning Pod. Uh, Spawning Pod is going to give me the ability to recycle some of our creatures and turn them into bigger, better stuff. Uh, Thought Monitor, I believe, is already the most expensive creature in my deck, though, so not gonna be potting that. Also, my graveyard's gone. R.I.P. to my, my cool stuff. Thought Monitor, Polymorphous, Vexir, all having a good time together. Tenacious Pup. Ooh, this gives a very, very powerful boon. Um, the boon, by the way, plus one, plus one, Trample and Vigilance, which on something like Glissa is absolutely nasty. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's nothing here. I guess they've got Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Hmm. Well, to make sure I'm getting enough damage in to deal with that, they didn't equip the Shadow Sphere. We're going to play Unctus to buff up our uh, artifact creatures. I'm not going to bother turning things into artifacts. Uh, I'll drop the Rhymewood Falls. Solemn Simulacrum. And Cultivate. Have the eye tyrant becomes man and can freely block my polymorphous, but we've got a lot of damage coming in from other sources. Blocking one with trample prevents three damage. So I would seek a one drop if they made that block. It looks like they're taking the rest of the hit. What is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The Sky Shroud Ambush! They're gonna fight! I'm not gonna deny them that fight. Because we seek off of our counter spell, we get another golem, we live to see another day. Good game. Two lands, but an Ornithopter of Paradise. Uh, this looks like it's going to be an alright start. And we're up against Goshentai of Life's Origins, which is a five-color Shrines Commander. Uh, Goshentai of Life's Origins can be a kind of mid rangey enchantment deck, or it can be a prison deck. I've seen both builds floating around. My personal build was a bit more mid rangey because that's just my style. I like to play mid range type decks. Uh, so we'll see how we fare against the, the Goshentai of Life's Origins. Come on, Vexir. Let's boogie. Uh, because I've got a bunch of blue cards in hand, I am going to play this on its blue face. And if you're wondering, why not play Seek New Knowledge there? Seek New Knowledge specifically does not get lands. And right now what I need is lands and ramp. Uh, a bunch of cards that do Seek actually have this text that's very specific about not getting lands, um, especially dependent on certain criteria. Since we didn't get a land, we're going to keep on ramping through these artifacts like Midnight Clock. Hello, Midnight Clock. A rupture Spire and a Rurgan Triumph. Friends don't let friends play Filter Lands. R rupture Spire is, uh. No, not a Filter Land, uh, Tap Lands. This is, a uh, an unusual addition to a deck, but I guess if you really want five color fixing, it does get you there. Sanctum Weaver. Okay, Curse of Silence. My commander is definitely not coming out right away. Unless I bounce that into hand, which I might want to. I also might want to hit the Sanctum Weaver uh, just to deny them some mana on this upcoming turn. 
Hmm. I needed this for the white mana. And I'm going to go ahead and bounce Sanctum Weaver. This would be generating two mana on that turn. And would be getting really, really big because the Goshen Tide of Life's Origin is an enchantment that also creates enchantment tokens. Here comes the Goshen Tie. And I've got two shrines on the battlefield. And ooh, what a nice get. Um, I got the Mirari's Wake. So if I play Mirari's Wake, I will essentially be abandoning Teferi to be attacked by the uh, Goshen Tie and his friends. And I'm okay with that. But I do wonder if maybe what I would rather do is play out these other cards. No, I want to go for the big ramp. This way, my three lands will each generate two mana apiece, and my creatures, like the Ornithopter I've currently gotten out, uh, will be stronger. We've got one, two, three, four cards that seek in hand. And if I've got six, seven, eight mana, that means I could play Vex here and then cast one of these. Sanctum Weaver coming out, gonna make a lot of mana. It is now six o'clock. It, it's not. It's actually 9 a.m. I'm just uh, just saying where I am. It's 9 a.m. Here comes Vexir, the kicks air. What a fun name to say. And I am going to grab Unctus onto the battlefield. I'm going to make my blue creatures become filters and also uh, give me the ability to turn my creatures into artifacts. Kind of neat. Still stuck on three lands. That's okay. I believe in me. Ooh, but I also believe in the danger that is the Prismatic Bridge. That's a very scary card. Goshen Tai of Boundless Vigor is going to get them another shrine. Now they have one, two, three, four. So if they pay the one on this, they can put four plus one plus one counters on any shrine they have. Looks like they're going to choose this because it does have trample. That does make sense. Aha! A land! It's a land that comes in tap, but it is still a land. A uh, Holohan Drangler also gets lands, but I would rather start seeking. Faceless Agent going to seek and get me currently a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Golem. You know, I don't actually know if that's the amount that I want, so I'm going to seek new knowledge. Hmm, and I'm going to put back this Mind Stone... And it looks like I've got enough mana to play the Blade Splicer as well. So now I have three first striking 5-5 five, five Vigilant Golems. And also Facelift Agent is technically a Golem too. So um, it's also got Vigilance in first strike. The Prismatic Bridge got them the Jukai Naturalist. They're ramping off the Prismatic Spiral. They're not Prismatic Spirals. The Prismatic Bridge is getting them a card. And then they're ramping off Growth Spiral. Here we go. Destiny Spinner. Making it so I cannot counter things. I do actually have a few counter spells in this deck because Blue does like that. Uh, Sanctum Weaver. Adding a bunch of green. Digging them deeper into the deck. They have a little bit more card draw here off Castle Loctwain too. If they have enough black mana... And they can bring back enchantments from their graveyard to the battlefield if we either destroy some or if they block with some. It's now 9 o'clock on the clock. It'll be 10 during my upkeep. So I want to start emptying out my hand so I can draw a fresh one. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 mana. Which is enough for Verdant Rejuvenation, but that would currently only look at, um, let's see, highest value on creatures, three, three mana deep. Ooh, the Field of Ruin is looking pretty chunky. That's from the Destiny Spinner. Uh, I don't think that'll work out that well for you. I have this Phyrexian Golem pile that all has First Strike.
Who wants to get these? Goshentai gets these. So I could cast this. I don't think it's a good idea, though. I want to get down something a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go with the Hollow Hand Wrangler, who's going to seek a land card for me. That will help me get that mana that I crave. Ignore that, Bing Bong. That was me um, knocking a chunk of metal I'm fiddling with in my hands into my mug. Which is a regular thing to say. So we see, we've got one golem. Let's make a second. We just buff them up. Got enough mana for both of these. Won't have enough for the Verdant Rejuvenation next turn when everything gets shuffled in, but I think this is fine. I would say we have a uh, adequately large pile of cards here. Yep. Adequately large. If I want to attack with these, one of them will get munched up by the Goshentai, but the rest would go through, um, which is pretty tempting. I think I'll pass, though. Malkator will not make another buddy, as I had only uh, two golems enter the battlefield this turn. Ooh. <laughs> Moonblessed Cleric is what they found. Moonblessed Cleric is going to let them grab an enchantment and put it on top of their deck. By the way, an enchantment that was revealed and put to the bottom was Meat Hook Massacre. Got to be a nice way to clean up the board, but it looks like instead they're going to go for Sanctum of All. They do have six or more shrines once this enters the battlefield, which means that shrines are going to start double triggering. Um, since now they have three shrine tokens, the Goshentai, the Goshentai, and the Sanctum. They get the double trigger here, and they're going to get to put a lot of plus one, plus one counters on things. It is now midnight! Bing bong! I'm gonna shuffle these two cards into my deck and get a fresh seven. Seems like a helpful thing to have. The portal to Phyrexia. Um, we also have these Seek lands. They're a little slow, but they work well with this. And I've got Obscura Polymorphist, who very importantly will be able to exile a creature. Like that one, or that one, maybe even that one. Uh, we're going to start with the Portal to Phyrexia. It's nine mana and it does a lot. Going to make our opponent sacrifice three creatures. Now, they, they probably will just hit Jukai Naturalist, Destiny Spitter, and this 1-1 one, one Shrine token. Maybe Moon... No, Moon Blessed Kirk. It's already, it's already been used up. Um, let's drop down the Command Tower. And I will play Obscure Polymorphist, which, by the way, I can actually exile my own creatures with the Polymorphist, but it's a lot better for me to hit either the Goshentai or the Sanctum Weaver here. Uh, not this one, because they can just replay it. They have plenty of mana. Um, and I also have a fun little ability here where I can conjure some stuff into my hand. We go to combat. We stare down our opponent. You know what? I've got five of these. Also, I'm in with the uh, Hollow Henge, too. They can eat one by blocking with the Goshen Tie of Life's Origin. And the Hollow Hinge Wrangler, uh, assuming they like block it and kill it, uh, before it's gone, I'm going to use it to discard a land and just generate a vanilla 5 5 into my hand because at this point in the game, I kind of would rather have just some more creatures to spit out, though this will eventually create creatures for me. It's expensive and it's kind of awkward. These gates that they put in for um, Boulder's Gate are very weird cards. They're, they feel like they're very much built for limited, but they are nice with Vex here. They're thinking about if they'd like to block. I would like them to block and have fewer than six shrines. Uh, they currently have fewer than six shrines. Looks like they're going for the block on the Goshen tie. If you're wondering why not make it into an 8 8 using Unctus? The answer is uh, it doesn't really matter because no matter what, there will be one thing that can get munched up by this Goshen tie. 
All right, I'm going to use the ability. I'm going to drop the gate to C tower. Got myself my 5-5 five, five here. But wait! With all of their mighty mana, what are they doing? A source to plowshare on Urza! That is going to eat up my entire board because these just lost the plus two, plus two. First strike finishes up and a couple of our golems die. What a shame. What a shame. But now I've got a creature in my graveyard, which means I've got something to bring back with Portal to Phyrexia. I can technically hit either, cre or, uh, either player's graveyard, but my graveyard is going to be a lot more helpful to me here uh, than theirs. Moonblessed Cleric, I do have one or two enchantments in my deck, but I already have the key one out, which is Marari's Wake, which gives me my big ramp. Unfortunately, losing this Urza also means I won't be able to clone my artifacts, which is so sad. Cloning the portal to Phyrexia was going to be a um, very rude thing that I could do on an upcoming turn. Uh, speaking of very rude things, my opponent is about to create so many tokens that uh, I am going to be unable to deal with them. They may even just get lethal off the Goshen Tide Ancient Wars. They currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because this triggers twice, uh, they're going to be able to deal 20 damage to my face using the Goshen Tide Ancient Wars. Yep. Just a few. Just a few of these. Um, they have enough mana that they can spit out all the tokens. They can hit my face and they can kill two of my creatures, which I assume they will hit Vexir. No, maybe not Vexir. Maybe Malkator and Blade Splicer. Maybe back here, though. We got rid of Malkator, Purity Overseer. Hit my face and kill another thing. I think getting rid of the first strike would be fine, but looks like they're going for Unctus, getting rid of that plus one, plus one buff that it was giving. my turn and we get to bring something back from the graveyard um i will go with any mini miny malkator was very cute i could use some more seek but i do have some seek right now i'm gonna go malkator malkator comes out we get one artifact Ooh, a second artifact the spawning pod i'm going to use the spawning pod to get rid of the obscura polymorphist and get by seeking a creature of the higher mana value this is by the way a pod that's more random it's really fun master splicer we now have enough artifacts that we will get another golem off of malkator but i'm still dead to this goshen tie uh bounty of the deep maybe there's something fun i could find here soon's intervention okay we can go all modes here. Oh no, they don't have any artifacts, only have iron. Okay, all modes, but one. Um, the artifact that is killing me, or the enchantment that is killing me, is this, the Goshen type Ancient Wars. They are also killing me through, you know, attacking me in the air. But this is fine, this is fine. We'll go to combat, and I'll swing in with everybody, and it will do nothing because we've lost the game. I, I didn't have any way to deal with these Pegasi. And even though I've made some knights, I've seeked some cards and I've made so many golems. Just, just look at them, they're beautiful. There's so many of them. Make you block at the very least. Maybe we'll block with a bunch of flyers. I see them blocking with flyers, in fact. They have left seven uh, damage in the air back, though. I feel like they're blocking in a really weird way here. These do have first strike. 
um, because of the blade splicer. They will kill all of these spirits. Blocking with five is the same as blocking with one. Sometimes the difference between one and all is very small. By the way, um, I should also point out that even if I destroy an artifact, which I did, uh, they're able to bring it back using this Goshen Tide of Life's Origin. So like this, the Goshen Tide of Ancient Wars, could be brought back next turn, um, replayed, and or just put back onto the battlefield. Yeah, it, it just goes. That's all I've got. Now, they've... They did block with a lot of their flyers, though. And I'm not sure why. Hi. Hello. Um, not everybody needs to play perfect, especially not at, like, 9 in the morning. They said hello and good game. Okay, are you gonna use your Goshen tie to get this? Maybe Sanctum can get the black Goshen tie that just drains for life? That could do it. They have, they have two ways to lethal that I can see off the Sanctum of All or the Goshen Tie of Life's Origins. Ah, there we go. Sanctum of Stone Fangs at the beginning of the pre-combat main phase. I will lose X life times two. And X is going to be like 20. So, good game. Triggers, triggers, uh, more triggers, triggers, and also, uh, triggers. The sanctum of the teeth! We die. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars! As always, if you'd like to watch me record these live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian, where I'm streaming right now. Well, maybe not right in, you're watching the video, but... When I'm making the video, I am streaming. So you should come on by twitch.tv slash Amazonian. I stream almost every single day. Uh, also, if you want to meet me in person, I will be at PAX East this month. So, you know, you can talk to me about magic or video games. Did you know I like video games that aren't magic? Because they do. Okay, hope to see you there. Bye!